So, I was watching the review of the Huawei Pura 7 Ultra and I thought this smartphone is going to be the latest iPhone 15 Pro Max, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Vivo X100 Ultra, Oppo Find X7 Ultra. Damn, that's so many Ultras. Many, many more. But when I saw its chipset, that's where things got interesting. This chipset caught my attention due to its unusual 12 cores. So I believe it's worth reviewing because the Huawei Pura 7 Ultra is really trending because of its cameras and overall looks. Plus, the chipset of this Huawei Pura 7 Ultra is from Kirin 9000 family, which makes it better and faster. But that's what I thought at first. So I was shocked when I saw its chipset performance and benchmarks, which you will see in a bit. Well, I know, you will be surprised too because this Huawei Pura 7 Ultra with this Kirin 9010 chipset cost about $1600, which is just insane. So watch this review till the end because if you are really planning on buying the smartphone, then you should know everything about its chipset since it's the main part of every smartphone and really makes a huge impact on everything. And the biggest impact this chipset did is in the benchmarks. So the Kirin 9010 demonstrates shameful performance in benchmarks. You may ask Hamza, how? Well, before I say anything, let me explain the benchmarks first. In M2 version 10, it has achieved a total score of 972,547 points, which is just so slower. And breaking down these scores, the CPU achieved 309,344 points. The GPU achieved 195,380 points. The memory achieved 264,617 points and the UX achieved 203,206 points, summing up to a total score of 972,547 points. And I'm going to ask you, are these scores are good for a 2024 ultra premium flagship smartphone? Let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comments section. I mean, this Huawei Pura 7 Ultra cost around $1,600, which is insane. Huawei, really? This tablet is even slower than the old Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, Google Tensor G1, and the Dimensity 9000. And these tablets are about 3 years old and still perform better than this K9010. I was expecting to see this chipset at least outperform these old chipsets. But no, it can't. And I am still processing that how Huawei is charging $1600 for this Huawei Pura 7 Alpha with this much slower chipset. And you know, it gets worse in Geekbench 6 benchmarks. In Geekbench 6, this chipset achieved a single core score of 1421 points and the multi core score of 4323 points. And at this point, this is not good. Considering that competitors like Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 achieved 2193 points in single core and 7304 in multi core scores. So that's something to keep in mind. This poor performance is due to its chipset CPU configuration. The Kirin 9010 features somewhat confusing CPU architecture. It has two ultra high performance scores based on Taishan V121 clock at 2.3 GHz, four performance scores based on Taishan 121 clock at 1.55 GHz and 6 power efficiency cores based on Core X A55 clock at 2.18 GHz. These are not the best when it comes to architecture, but considering the US ban on Huawei, it's still holding up. I will say it will improve over time because it is manufactured using SIMC 7nm process node, which is a significant boost from the last gen Kirin 9000S. Plus, this tablet is based on ARM version 8 slash A instruction set architecture. SIMC doesn't have fancy technologies like TSMC have, but this tablet supports hyper threading, which is good at this point. Now, if I talk about the GPU, the Kirin 9010 is equipped with the Megon 910 GPU, which operates at the frequency of 750 MHz. This GPU offers performance similar to that of the Snapdragon 865, which was launched almost 5 years ago. So, it's a shame to see this on a $1500 Huawei Pura 7 Ultra, a 2024 flagship smartphone. And you know, it will directly impact the smartphone's gaming capabilities. This is something you should keep in mind while purchasing this smartphone. Now, if I talk about the RAM and storage, then, the Kirin 9010 chipset features quad channel LPDDR5 RAM with a memory frequency of 2750 MHz. This chipset supports a maximum RAM size of up to 16 GB and has a maximum memory bandwidth of 24 GB per second. On the storage front, this chipset supports UFS 3.1 and UFS 4.0 storage technology for faster read and write speeds. The storage is quite fast. I can't say the same for the RAM, which is just bad for its class. And you know what is bad? for you to not subscribe to my channel because 
97% of you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. So it will mean the world to me if you subscribe to my channel. Now in terms of features, this chipset is really impressive. On the display front, this chipset supports a maximum display resolution of 4K at 60Hz, QHD plus at 144Hz, and Full HD plus at 165Hz. And it can support LTPO3 10-bit AMOLED displays with an adapter refresh rate which varies from 1 to 120 hertz. So this chipset is good in terms of display features. Now, regarding the camera capabilities, this chipset features triple 18-bit HDR ISP, which is why the Hawaii Pure 7 Ultra can take breathtaking shots. It supports a single camera of up to 200 megapixels and can capture and playback videos at 4K at 60 FPS. And there are tons of features in the cameras of the Huawei Pura 7 Ultra. And because of that, the smartphone did perform really well in terms of camera capabilities. Now, if I talk about the connectivity, well, it's a complete mess and trash. Well, let me explain. The Kirin 9000 features better than 5000 modem, which is extremely slow in terms of download and upload speeds. This modem offers a download speed of up to 4600 Mbps. I mean, really, Huawei, an upload speed of up to 2500 Mbps which is just a shame considering it's a 2024 flagship chipset. We are talking about 200% slower speeds compared to its competitors. Additionally, this chipset support Wi-Fi 6. I mean, not even Wi-Fi 6E. Okay, and Bluetooth 5.3. So that really brings me to my final word. High Silicon is marketing this as a flagship chipset. But you know, it's more like a mid-range chipset from 2021. And you know, people are calling it a heating machine because it's based on a 7 nanometer with 12 cores. So it produces a lot of heat. So in terms of overall quality, I really don't recommend this chipset by any means. And thus, I don't recommend going to the Huawei Pura 7 Ultra with a whopping $1,600 price point. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. $1,600 for a smartphone with such a poor performance is a waste for your hard-earned money. The hardware is top of the line. But you know, what will you do with the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ with the engine of Honda City? You get my point? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. The hardware is top of the line. But the chipset is slower, so this chipset can't really take the full potential from this hardware. My point is, this chipset is really slower, and it makes a huge impact on overall smartphone experience. So that's all for this review. If you learned something new and useful from this video, then subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to never miss a new video from this channel. And if you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. So my name is Samza, this is Headstick, and see you in the next video. If you want to watch the full review of the Mediatek Dimensity 6300, then that video is right here. And if you want to watch the full review of the Mediatek Dimensity 725, then that video is right here. Thank you for watching.